Hi, Tori Eisenman with Benchmark Real Estate Group, and today we have Angie Demure with AMD Care Management. And Angie, you're doing some amazing things in the community and helping families. You know, you were telling me about some of the methods to kind of track family members sure. and protect them, I guess is a better word than tracking them, <laughs> but making sure that they're safe. Sure, safety in the home is always a key. So if someone's goal is to stay home as long as possible, some of the systems we put in place, one is called a, a peers unit or a personal emergency response system. So the best way people know that is that I fall and I can't get up button. Right. <laughs> so there's several different manufacturers out there, but they're becoming more and more sophisticated to have the fall sensors on them. So if they, they could detect if somebody has fallen and right. the system will call back, it's usually through a speaker, and say, hey, I've detected a fall, is everything okay? Because sometimes the elderly person doesn't always press the button or if they've had a pretty significant fall and are right. unconscious. So if they don't get a response, they dispatch EMS. Which is amazing because I mm. always worried about those things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what if you don't push the button or sure. if you're unconscious, sure. how do they really help you? Yeah. So there is a method for them to help exactly. you. Another system is the medication management machines that you load them up. So the care manager would load up the medication as to the doctor's order and you can set it several times a day, whatever that schedule is. Now, it will dispense, it'll beep with a big red button to say time to take your medicine. You could put reminders on there, time to take your blood sugar, check your blood pressure. There's all different systems out there now. And they press the button and it'll dispense the little cup for them. So they don't have to worry about measuring, remembering what time, it'll remind them. What if they don't now, take you? If they don't, <laughs> now if they don't press that button, I'll get a phone call within a couple minutes. Okay. They do have a battery backup in there as well. So if the power were to go out, I think it's an 18 hour backup. If okay. the machine doesn't check in daily, maybe they unplugged it, we'll get a phone call. Um, another system, you can always put nanny cams or granny cams, we call them, right. for the elderly in the house, whether it's a doorway, you can put alarms on there to trigger if they open the door, if you're dealing with a Alzheimer or a wanderer, somebody with advanced stages of dementia, um, or you can put a camera in the common areas so you can keep an eye on just what's happening, what's going house. on and, and view them actually taking the medication as they take it out of the... So what's your process? So let's just say mm -hmm. somebody's not taking their medication, you get a phone call, what happens mm -hmm. from there? Um, usually it's first a phone call to see. Sometimes there's someone else in the house with them. It just depends on the situation. I usually call the individual. If it's somebody that I know is much more confused, it's usually a visit to the home. Okay. So if you can't reach them, then yeah. you visit the home. And what's, yep. the, what's the process on communicating with the family members? Uh, very good question. I communicate with the family members after every visit, whether it's okay. scheduled or unscheduled, or if it's a call like that, I'll call the family member saying, you know, is it okay, I'm going out there, this is the alert I've received. And is there usually like a list of neighbors that can maybe get there quicker? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Some okay. cases are like that. Great question. Uh, sometimes there's other support systems in place, so I'll reach out to those people first. And yeah. if not, then I go. Yeah, just because it might be 30 minutes for sure. you to get someplace. Exactly. And 30 minutes could be detrimental. Sure. So there is mm -hmm. a, a process of mm -hmm. a list of emergency contact people mm -hmm. and yeah. such. And then as far as like access to the homes, how mm -hmm. does that work? Do you... So a couple of things we put in place, sometimes there's key codes. Um, of several residents, we've put like the lockbox in place, especially for EMS. So um, we put that number on file with emergency management. Okay. So that way they're not breaking in the door. If there's a call, there's a code there with an extra key. So yeah, that saves a lot of money, right? Really and does. time for that money matter, <laughs> especially if you have somebody stressed out and upset. Mm -hmm. And there's another great system out there called Smart 911. And it's a national uh, system that you put all your pertinent information, your emergency contacts, if there's a pet in the home, where to find the extra oh, wow. key, um, what type of medications, what's your diagnosis. So if, if 911 is called, that will populate to them automatically. But you have to have a software program or something Well, it's, anybody can do it. I recommend anybody to do it. It's smart911.com, and it participates with the uh, local counties in the area. Wow, I've never heard of that. That's yeah. like amazing information. It's a great resource. It's priceless, so <laughs> if, if somebody wants some additional information, how do they contact sure. you? Sure, uh, my number is 352-432. 2115 and my website is amdcares.com. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.